Okay, stay with me, running through all the top stories. He's Conservative commentator, Benedict Spence. I'm so sorry, we haven't got a word in in the last uh, few uh, uh, interviews. because Don't we apologise, titles... everyone's very grateful. <laughs> they, a day off. Grateful <laughs> nation. They feel the same way about me, don't worry. <laughs> but look, let's go back to this, this defence conversation. We spoke to James Heapy. A former armed forces minister, um, he appeared on the show a lot when he was in that role. He's standing down as an MP and, and obviously stood down as a minister. And he was very much talking about how he welcomes uh, this, this announcement, this extra £75 billion. Pounds. But it's over, over the years to 2030. Again, assuming that happens, because it is a small proviso that there is a general election mm. uh, coming up later this year. Now, whether or not uh, Keir Starmer is going to make the same decision if he's prime minister later this year, as Rishi Sunak has done about raising defence spending to 2.5% of GDP, that certainly won't be sort of a vote winner among many Labour voters, mm. because we know <clears> that money can't be manual. Well, we used to just, <laughs> we used to just make, create money out of thin air. Mm. How's that? How's that worked out for our economy over the years? So where is that money going to come from? Because it's going to have to come from, realistically, taxes going up or spending in other areas going down, is it not? Well, it is. And the problem that the armed forces have faced for a very long time is that in order to sort of prioritise some things, other parts of the military budget has had to be cannibalised. Um, I think Trident being the best example of that. That's what's going to probably have to happen with other government yeah. budgets in order to fund just bringing the military up to the standard that it's supposed to be. That's it. an awful lot of this money, and even James Heapy acknowledged that. A yeah. lot of this money is it's not going to create new capabilities. We, we it's need going to, yeah. to kind of reinforce what we've already got because we need basically to, it's been underfunded. We need to replace Trident. It's not fit for purpose. It's over time and it's falling apart. We saw yeah. that with the failed missile launch a couple of a couple of months ago. We need to be able to man the boats that we already have. We need to be able to sort of man the divisions that we already have. We're not able to do that. That's a really worrying sign. Mm -hmm. And 75 billion doesn't go that far in a modern armed uh, in, in a modern military with all of the equipment. And not the way we spend it, our procurement Absolutely people. Absolutely Please get bad. someone else in charge of procurement, and yeah. our inability to do that. It would be good if we were a little bit more efficient at this. But, the French, yeah, this the French can, I think, spend some. They spend less than us as a percentage, but they, but they actually get more bang for their buck. The Italians think. and the Spanish do as well, and that's mm. really concerning, given that and, they only have their things and we And we won't, we won't become the top spending. Now, we, it took us years to even get up mm. to that 2% of, of GDP, which was, by the way, been a long-standing NATO commitment. Yeah. Donald Trump, I think we've discussed this many times before, quite right when he said, why should America come and defend you if you're not going to spend your 2% of GDP commitment? Why, why should American taxpayers fund this? And he's quite quite right on this. But Poland, um, you know, some of the other Baltic states, the Baltic states, they're the ones who have got Russia on their doorstep, literally, with the toe peaking just over. They are increasing yeah. to more than that. Even though that's smaller sums of money because they've got smaller economies, should we be looking at going further? I think right now we're in a very difficult economic position. We should be trying to go further if we can. One of the reasons we're in a difficult economic position is, is because of the Ukraine war. Mm. But it's already happened. We have but to if we had been, if Baltic Europe had been states, serious yeah. about its defence, would clear. Russia have invaded Ukraine? Um, I suspect not now, certainly, maybe in the future. You can't rule that out. But actually, if Ukraine had been serious about its defence, not just Europe, Ukraine itself had actually taken this seriously. And we do have to level a lot of criticism at how Ukraine handled this. There's no two ways about this. Um, you know, giving up its nuclear deterrent. Lots of people so say, that oh, was guaranteed. No, no. They had Does... a guarantee from us and oh. the US. Oh, well, that where, was, where very, was, that, that, that that was a desperately foolish thing to believe then, wasn't it? Because many countries throughout history have been given guarantees. This is how the First World War happened. You're given guarantees by superpowers and it doesn't quite come to fruition. It doesn't work out the way you planned. That was a very foolish thing to do, especially with Russia's history. And actually, frankly, with the United States' history of isolationism. That was a very foolish thing to have done. And then to see the way that the winds were going in Europe, ramping down on defence capacity, over-reliance on Russian oil and gas, there should have been warning signs and they weren't taken seriously. Finland has not had to be in NATO all of these years because it has always taken its defence seriously. Yeah. And it's, even it's now... It's been invaded and by this, Russia. And this is yeah. what we're saying about, you know, yeah, the... The Ukraine invasion has already happened. Let's be clear, the Baltics are not going to be invaded. Finland is not going to be invaded and Poland is not going to be invaded anytime soon because they have taken this seriously. It would be a far harder war for and Russia to they win. because they're under NATO's umbrella, which Ukraine was not. Well, Finland was not. Finland is now as well, a sign Finland, of solidarity, no, saying, but Finland it didn't now, have to yeah. be. And, but no, you're right. The peace dividend that Europe has enjoyed has been done at the behest of the American taxpayer. And they've been saying since Kennedy, it's not a new thing, yeah. actually, that you, we you need, need to start to paying for your defence. Indeed, and again, yeah. with America sort of looking now more to to the Pacific rather than mm. across the Atlantic. We do need to take more care of it. Well, I want to hear from you, please. The Prime Minister has announced a £75 billion increase in defence spending by 2030. That's total, not per year, uh, total to put Britain on, he says, is a war footing. I want to know, do you back the extra spending on the military? Uh, tell us if you do, tell us if you don't, and tell us why. Give us a call on 0344 499 1000. Text on 8722 or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls are charged at the national rate. Text 
cost one standard network rate message. Love to get your calls on air. Do hit those phones. 0344-499-1000 is the number to call. Um, let's also talk about that Ukraine cash. Um, a massive, big, multi-billion pound, multi-billion dollar deal was uh, approved by House of Repres Representatives at the weekend. Now uh, the Senate uh, is about 30 uh, billion going to uh, help Israel replenish their, of course, their Iron Dome uh, military capability to protect themselves against attack from Iran and others. But also, of course, crucially, that's $61 billion in cash, um, not cash, in, in cold, hard steel armaments mm. for Ukraine. Some of that uh, armament going as soon as in the next few days, as soon as Joe Biden has signed that uh, that law. Um, this is going to be vitally important, isn't it? It is. It's awful that it's taken this long to happen. And actually, I think it speaks to a real idiocy amongst a lot of Republicans that there is just still this idea that America can isolate itself from the world, this idea that they shouldn't be spending money overseas because it's not their fight. It is their fight. If you are the global superpower, then these things will come back to bite you. You have responsibilities. Uh, I think most people understand that, but certain wings of the Republican Party don't. So it's awful that it's taken this long for it to happen. It could have happened months ago. People have died. Ukraine have lost territory. Avdivka has taken a terrible hit as a result of this. And now, now we're in a position where this equipment will go to hold back the Russians. It's not going to be the case that it can be used to push them back anymore. It's about maintaining yep. the lines. And the longer that this goes on, and there's all the nonsense as well as about giving them defensive weapons rather than offensive weapons, you increase the likelihood that they will have to make a peace deal with Vladimir yep. Putin, who the Americans have been telling us yep. forever is an awful evil person yep. who you shouldn't do it. And the with. peace deal will be that you get to keep you know, the Donbass region, keeping yep. Crimea. Um, and, and we know the, the, the outrageous, disgusting treatment of, of the mm. Ukrainian people by the Russians, how the Ukrainians could ever agree to that. I mean, their children being stopped, mm. literally stealing their children. I mean, as if we would ever put up with that. I find it extraordinary. Yeah. Um, TikTok ban. US also going to bring in a ban on TikTok because it is a Chinese-owned uh, company. Mm. They deny that they uh, pass any information to the Chinese government. But actually, they're required by law under the Chinese laws uh, to give any information. There's a lot of issues about data, but also it, um, basically saying if you don't don't sell up to an American company, then you're going to be banned in the States. I'm going to be intrigued how they're going to do that. Um, should we follow that ban? And is your concern about data, given that you know, Facebook and X and, and everyone else takes all of our data anyway, mm. is the real issue actually the propaganda that is put out on TikTok? For me, it's far more about the sort of the, 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 the phenomena that can be spread by social media rather than just the data. The data is important, let's not get, you know, because that helps people to develop algorithms to target you when it comes to uh, propaganda. But I don't have an issue with a degree of protectionism on this because China itself is very protectionist about letting foreign yeah. companies in, but also about what its own citizens are allowed to watch. And they don't do that because they're evil and totalitarian. They do that because they understand that this technology is potentially very harmful. There are limits placed not just on children, but on ordinary citizens as well. You know, they do have platforms out there, but there are limits on them. And I don't see what the issue is with the United States doing this or with Britain doing this. We shouldn't just expose people you know, en masse to something that we do not yet fully understand and that we don't understand the entirety of the relationship yeah. between the company and the Chinese government. Yeah, well, we know, but it is a simple matter that it is a Chinese law that any mm. ch uh, state, any Chinese company, private or other, that, that they are required by law, if the Chinese government requests, to hand over any information the Chinese mm. government wants. That, that, so for them to say, well, we don't do that, well, fine. But yeah. at any point, China can ask for it. It seems to me to be very, very clear. The, the Russian bots and the Chinese bots that are all over uh, the Twitter, over, over Facebook, over, um, over TikTok and Insta and everything else, mm. they, are, they are driving a narrative, mm. whether it's, you mentioned it earlier, whether it's about Israel, Gaza, uh, whether it's about Ukraine. I, I get bombarded with bots. And I can always see when there's, there's been an interview that's gone a bit viral, mm. and then you will suddenly see these bots. And it's very, very clear. If you just look at these accounts, you can see that these are not real people. Yeah. One of the really weird phenomena, uh, certainly on Twitter, is the amount of violence and also pornography that has uh, just appeared on this platform in recent years. And it's a targeted thing. It's a deliberate Oh, I get loads to, of that. It's a deliberate yeah. thing to make the platform unusable. And that is because, of course, Twitter is, you know, love it or hate it, but it, there is an element of democracy to it. You know, you get a lot of now, interesting comments. Is. You do. Which is why now that it has been taken out of the hands of a company that was very keen on suppression, you are getting a lot more external attempts to make it unusable. And you do have to ask yourself, who is behind that? Why is behind yes, I don't it? know why so many porn stars and porn models are suddenly messaging me on Twitter. It's well, quite exactly. interesting. But it is an effort to try to make an, a, a good platform unusable. Yeah. And who benefits from that? Well, it's not us. I exactly, exactly.